message to come together with brothers and sisters of like precious faith. And, and Lord, we just invite you into our hearts and minds and and will you be with us this evening in, in spirit and, and, and fill our hearts and, and minds with understanding and, and accordance with your will. May we learn to apply your principles, Lord, and, and teach us those things. And we thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. I, what did I do? Oh, here it is. I'm going to pass around. This is a roster. Put your name and your email address on there. And um, so we're going to have a lot of reading in this class. I know some of you don't like to read. I like to hear this. That's the only way you're going to get it. Uh, and some of it is it, making. Some of it's five, six pages, and to make 20 copies, five or six pages. I mean, we run a lot of paper. You know, there's no need to do that. I mean, we got emails. It's an easy way to communicate. And you, if you have questions about it, you're welcome to reply back to me and, and, and ask me questions about it. Uh, I'm okay with that. Um, give me a day to get back to you. Like I said last week, I'm not, a, I'm not in a microwave schedule. Um, so, uh, any questions before we get started? Okay. Um, you had a assignment of reading. There was two Two articles. One was an introduction by, by Robert M. Work, or West rather, and then the other one was the nature of the Bible. Uh, reaction to that. said that the Bible is just another word for a book. Is that what I took from this? Uh, Say that again, Barry. This, that was in the what is the Bible, right? Yeah. The nature of the Bible. Yeah, is it it's, the Bible just means a, a book? Well, it's 66 books. But I think he's talking about the beginning. The word Bible means book. Oh, the word Bible. Yeah. Okay, it means book. Oh, okay, I misunderstood. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm hard of hearing, guys. Well, I have a question. Is that if you go and buy a Bible in a bookstore, why is it under the fiction section? Probably what they think it is. <laughs> Which bookstore is that? Borders? I don't know, but that, that is always the comment my, my nephews say to me. They were brought up in the church, they don't attend, and they are, uh, they they believe there's a higher being, but that's it. So, and that's the, that was their comment is, you know, if you go into the, a bookstore, you will find that Bibles are under the fiction section. Not in a Christian bookstore. Not in a Christian <laughs> no. bookstore, but like a regular bookstore. Yeah. I, I think it. I like Barnes think so and Noble. I don't think in all, all, think in all bookstores it is. Yeah, maybe think... in some, they're probably very liberal, and I, I don't know if they have a religious section or not. But um, that's what I was gonna say. It's usually under religious. Yeah, I don't worry about that. Yeah. Because I know human nature, people are evil, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you know I expect it. It's so all let it. Get to me. Too much. Does that answer your question, Barry? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good description of how the, it came to be, looking at that, and how how it was written. You know what it was written on, and and, and of course I like history, and I, I like that kind of stuff. That's why 
why I subscribe to biblical archaeology. I, I love reading about that stuff. Others react, yes, to this. The one thing I noticed, and I... I thought about this in the past and then I didn't, but like God spoke directly to his people in the Old Testament. And part of it was because we did, they didn't have all of the books of the Bible that we have today and Jesus hadn't come yet. But I, I think people always wonder, why doesn't God speak directly to us today? And we have to remember, we have the Bible that he does speak directly to us, that that's his word. And I do have to remember that occasionally, like, you know, why doesn't God just speak to us directly? <laughs> I think he does, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But, you know, in the Old Testament, they had, they had writings. You know, yeah. They had, they had yeah, they the, had, uh, you know, the five, you know, yeah. Uh, most of the, the Old Testament did. Um, and it was sacred. It was... It, it was, I don't even know how to punctuate the word sacred the way they, because it was, they really revered that. It was the word of God. And that's something that I think we lose touch with in our society. We don't have much of a reverence for that. We don't, we, in fact, in just a little bit, we're going to talk about that because of the, I, I want to I want to get deep with understanding the spirit because if we're going to do any meditation, that's who we do it through. Okay, and when you read some of these old ancient monks that who are attributed the, the authorship of devotions which we know is not true David and Solomon I have found to be the meditators when you read the book of Psalms and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes these wisdom books. You, this is just pure meditation. And in fact, I would recommend when you, we, we're going to learn a little bit about some meditation tonight with the Lectio Divina. And I'm going to do it different than the standard Lectio Divina because I believe that when you sit down to do a Bible study, I know I, I do this sometimes. I, I, I go sit down, I got to study humility. So I, I sit down, I, I go right to studying humility. First Peter 1, chapter 1, verse 3 says, prepare your mind for action. That's in all things. And when you're going to dive into the Word of God and allow God to speak to you, you need to prepare yourself to listen to Him. We speak to God in our thoughts, but when we read the Word of God, that's God speaking to us. And remember the Godhead, and that's one of the things, one of the handouts I've got tonight. It's, it was written in the early 1900s by Oswald Chambers in the Biblical Psychology. And it's about the Spirit and activating the Spirit whenever you're going to study the Word of God. Because that Spirit, you know, God says, my ways are not your ways, and your ways are not my ways. So we need a translator. The Holy Spirit is the translator. And when we 
attune ourselves to God, we do it through the Holy Spirit. That's throughout the Bible. Okay? And so I'm convinced because I've heard people talk. And they don't, they think primarily of God. They use the word God. I want you to get used to differentiating the triune. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They're three separate uh, supernatural beings. Now, God the Son became a human being, but he is in spirit also. Okay? And and so differentiate them in your in your head so that you have a relationship with the spirit and you have a relationship with the Father and you have a relationship with Jesus. Can you have a relationship with three different people? Sure. And be one and the same? I think so. Yeah we can. And, and I, so, any question about that? That's going to be homework for next week. Is reading. It's uh, the the domain and dominion of the spirit, and it's a process of the Trinity. And then there's another one. Writing is what the Bible says about the Godhead, and that's about five pages. Um, it's the, the topical scripture is John 4, 24, which says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible is the truth, and God, that we got the Holy Spirit, that we worship him through. Okay? Um, so, those will be handouts. For, for next week to read. Uh, any other comments about the assignment for this week? The nature of the Bible and that introduction. Anybody? Well, it said over, there were over 40 individuals who uh, wrote the Bible. Yeah. Over about 1,500 years. Yeah. yeah throughout different countries. And some of them were from uh, Asia, some of them were from uh, the Mediterranean area, some of them were from, uh, they were all over the place. I mean, how can somebody doubt the Bible? That, that's why it's the bestseller. It is a bestseller every year. And I think one of the articles I read said the average number of Bibles in every household is four. That's the average number of Bibles in a household. Now there's some that got 10 or 15, and some <laughs> have one. Okay, some have none. But the average is about four, according to the surveys. I, I just find that interesting. Well, uh, we have seven. <laughs> what, then? We have seven. You have seven. Yeah, because I got um, my grandfather's Bible, uh -huh. you know, and then I got my parents' Bible. So we just have accumulated Bibles, yeah. Yeah. And I, some yeah. handed down. Yeah. I've got our family Bibles and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, a lot of pictures in it. And I, I, I love that. talk about sitting down to start to 
to read the Bible. And, and I'm, right now I'm just talking about reading because Lectio Divina just means divine reading. Okay? And there's, there's lots of different ways to do this. But I want to, before we do it, I want to prepare you a little bit to, to open, to allow your mind to focus on, on and allow that spirit to, 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 to prepare you for the Word of God, for, for God to speak to you, okay? And so we'll, we can take a, a verse of Scripture. Um, let me back up a second. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says that the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. 1 Corinthians 15, 45 says, Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. When, about four years ago, for three years in a row, our Sunday school class studied the unseen realm. The unseen realm is not the physical stuff that you see, this desk and these books and this computer, these people, it's the spirits. There's spirits, there's demons that is within the unseen realm. They exist because God tells us they exist. And we, we believe that. And so we, when you look at uh, the book of Ephesians, especially Ephesians chapter 6, when you read that, it, it, it talks about the power of some of those evil spirits and the, and the influence that they can have on us. And, and like the, the uh, you know, we've all studied, and I know you guys that have worked with the kids, you've taught them the, the, the armor of God. And that's great. That, that is great. They, they need to know that so that they grow up with it. Uh, some people don't, but it's very powerful uh, uh, to know that. And so we, when Moses, when Moses had his first interaction with God, where was he? Do you remember? Is on the mountain. And what do you see? A burning bush. Oh, a burning bush. And so he started to walk towards the burning bush. And what did the Lord tell him? Take off his shoes. Take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. Cosmic geography. Folks, we are on holy ground all the time. Because we, as Christians, are always in the presence of Almighty God. And so you are always on holy ground. And this, this reverence that talks about in Scripture is, is we need to have that reverence. And I think when we have that reverence, we're to be praying all the time. Right? That, that's what it says. Don't don't stop praying. In other words, maintain that, that interaction with Almighty God. Now, we get distracted, okay, by it with doing things, right? We, we do. We, we get distracted. But there's a mindset that we develop. And I think it comes about that mindset gets developed and conditioned through reading and studying the Word of God. When you have that relationship with God, 
Sometimes I, I can't wait to get back to my house to dive in the, the waters of, 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 of that God has. I, I, just, I just do sometimes. I get that, that what's the word? Uh, alcoholics <laughs> have it. The <laughs> urge. Yeah. Yeah. And I do. I, I get that craving. And and that's that's a good thing. Okay. So um any questions so far, please and stop stop me and ask questions if you have Because sometimes I, I talk too much. Okay. All right. Um, is that form going around for it's the roster? Yeah. You got it, Dave? Okay, good. Um, Lectio Divina. I went to the American Association for Christian Counselors Conference in November, this past November in Nashville. And, and it, I was there for a week. And I, I met uh, a psychologist from California who does a lot of writing and he has a website on uh, meditations and he, he owns workshops and he travels around the world and, and delivers workshops. And, and I got a few of, of some of his stuff. I looked at it and we sat and talked for a long time, uh, a couple times actually before I bought his stuff. Uh, I'm cheap, but uh, <laughs> what, what man isn't? <laughs> I don't. I don't like his web. I, I went on his website after I got home, and I, 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 I ain't there yet. Um, he's talking about something I looked at when I was in Southeast Asia, and I was doing. That looking at Buddhism and uh, Taoism, and uh, they talked about astral traveling. Okay, um, he talks. He talks on his website about other lives <laughs> through this this traveling. Okay, now. Turn to Acts chapter 22, verse 17. Twenty-two, seventeen. I'm gonna start at fifteen. It says that, and after these days, we packed and went up to Jerusalem. And this is Paul talking. And it says also some of the disciples from Caesarea went with us and and brought with them a a certain Manassan of Cyprus, an early disciple with whom we were to lodge. And when we had come to Jerusalem. The brethren received us gladly. On the following day, Paul went in with us to James. This is not. That, that's I'm not what we have. Twenty-two seventeen. Twenty-two seventeen. Twenty-two seventeen. I'm sorry. I was just checking. I was just testing y'all. <laughs> <laughs> My pages are stuck together here. I won't have it. I just read it in this book. Okay, let me get in my...
And Paul says, when I had returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance. Meditate on that a second. What do you think happened to him? You got to remember, this is right after he had met Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. He was taken over by the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. He was a changed man. <laughs> he was in the spirit. And he was where? Where was he? He was in the temple. temple. He was in the temple. Where did God live at that time? Temple. In the temple. Yeah. Where does he live now? In heaven. In our hearts. In the sanctuary, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's a very significant verse of scripture because I love that song, the sanctuary. When we sing, I love I love that song, and I just I worship because I I, I just I, I check everything out and I I am in 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 my spirit and I'm in there with God. I'm in the room with him. And he is in the room with me. And, and we're, I hate to say this, somebody's going to take offense to it, but we're buddies. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're friends. You know? I revere him like nothing else in my life, but he's a friend, too. There, there's a there, the, the relationship is very complex and very complicated because I'm a sinner. And I'm probably one of the worst sinners. That's what I tell my clients when I'm talking about sin and their sin, even though they're they don't even believe the Bible, they're 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 in another world. But I have to tell them the truth. I have to be truthful with them. And this is true. And I tell them I'm the worst sinner. But I know better because I know better. That makes me the worst one. And they're sinners too, but they don't even know it. But Christ died for them because he loved them. Do you ever lie? Do you ever gossip? The other, and I'm going to go on and on and on, and they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, those are sins. Because that's against human nature. Okay. And so this verse of scripture for me is just, it, to me, is very powerful. Because when we do, when we do Lectio Divina, I think I want you to experience that. That's why I'm prepping this, because I want I want you to be prepared to experience something that maybe maybe you've never or maybe it's like something you've experienced before, or maybe it's not. I don't know. Everybody's going to be different. But this is I think Lectio Divina is was not designed necessarily for preparation to 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 read scripture, it was just to to read scripture. Okay, I want to do it in a way that prepares you to study, because when you when you go through this class, and we're going to be looking at ways to study, some different steps to take, etc. And before you before you sit down to do it or before you turn on your computer or before you open your Bible, I want you to select a verse of scripture and, and, and go through this process of the Lectio Divina to prepare your mind for action, to, to, uh, to study and be open to receiving God's word. 
because that's him speaking to you. Okay? So, any questions about that so far? Then let me, the, uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. This is something that is worth uh, meditating on also. It, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. I know you've all heard, heard that. For scripture to interact deeply with our, with our whole self requires that we read a verse of scripture reflectively. Okay? And we want to read it several times. Sometimes if it's a short verse of scripture, you, you can read it and punctuate each word each, different each time. For example, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly and I think when you when you're sitting there by yourself in your spot that you're comfortable in and there's no distraction right now there's distraction and what I read probably didn't have a lot of meaning to you that's okay I'm just trying to make the point of how to, to do something when you're doing that and you're you're doing it and you're focusing Christ and you're getting into the word that spirit is going to connect with you and you're going to experience something because you can't describe the spirit can anybody describe a spiritual experience can you yeah when I the day that I accepted uh, Christ as my Lord and Savior mm -hmm. I felt Somebody just came into me, lifted me right up. I yeah. felt like I was floating. The connection I had was just unbelievable. Yeah. The happiness, the, the joy. Yeah. You were astral traveling, weren't you? <laughs> I'm telling you, it was something that I couldn't really explain yeah. to somebody if they've never really yeah. Yeah. That's a good description. But that doesn't that describes how you felt. But it doesn't describe the spirit. The spirit is an experience. It, it, I mean, God is spirit, and it's supernatural, but it it's an experience that we have to have, and that's different for you, and it's different for me and everybody else in the room. Yes, please. I know when I am singing that I have experienced that I get this tingling sensation when I'm singing um, in, okay. in the congregation or if I'm, if mm -hmm. I'm singing a, a yeah. solo. What do you attribute that to? The Holy Spirit, okay. that it's, it's touching me. So that's so pretty that boring. You do it pretty regularly? It, it, at least once a week okay. that it'll happen. Okay. Yeah. Especially yeah. if I'm hearing it. I mean, the congregation singing. Yeah. 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 There's certain songs that we sing that have a different effect mm -hmm. on me. Certain, certain songs that, that, that we sing. Uh, and that's, I think that's pretty normal. And, and this, you know. So, any, any questions you think you want to try it? Yeah, and the thing is, is as for you know, you're you're doing this with reading, but even with uh, in worship when you are singing, especially I find with the choruses, 
it's again saying a, a phrase maybe time and time again or in a different way and that it almost gets you to a different plane of mm -hmm. worshiping mm -hmm. so that you are you are preparing your heart and yeah. your mind for what is going to happen in the yeah. service yeah. because it's just not often just verbal as as talking yeah. Yeah. I, a lot of people are reached through through music yeah the church i grew up in was uh, Zion's Chapel Church of Christ. It was part of the uh, Church of Christ Christian Church begun by Alexander Campbell uh, movement. Uh, and I, I grew up in that church, going to Sunday school church every Sunday, and uh, most, most Wednesday nights, Sunday night. Um, and I remember when you when you shared your experience, it, it triggered a, a memory that I had when I accepted Christ. And I I was a different person. I was a little bit well, I accepted him several times uh, <laughs> as a young kid, you know, but the, just one time was special. And I remember that. And it was uh, a feeling I've never forgotten. I, I just, I, I liked it. Yeah. I liked it, and I liked to feel it. You know? so. Daphne, how old were you when you accepted Christ? I was only 15. Hmm. That's old. <laughs> 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 no, really, most, you know, Children are reached when they're children. Unfortunately, yeah. my family uh, did not attend church on a regular basis. Yeah. And we moved a lot uh -huh. from Pennsylvania to Ohio, Pennsylvania to Ohio. So it took them a while till they finally settled down and started going to church regularly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had been in different churches over my life, but it wasn't until then. Mm -hmm. That's why I ask, because a lot of times it's when you're younger, yeah, no. and you maybe kind of fall away, and then you kind of come back to him. Yeah. I want to give you the definition of a word. But before I do that, I want to get your... When I say the word worship, God, you love him. Pardon? Showing God that you love him. Okay. him. Mm -hmm. okay. Focusing 100% on God at that time. Okay. Like you're not distracted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Miriam Webster describes it as to honor or show reverence for as a divine being or supernatural power. To regard, this is a second definition, to regard with great or extravagant respect, honor, or devotion. That's the transitive verb definition. The noun definition is very similar. It says reverence offered a divine being or supernatural power, also an act of expressing such reverence. Two, it's a form of religious practice with its creed and ritual. And we have creeds and we have rituals in our worship services. Number three is a, an extravagant respect or admiration for or devotion to an object of esteem. When you talk about meditation, are you worshiping? You can be. No. <laughs> you can be. Absolutely. But not always, maybe. <laughs> you want to be. Right. 
that's the purpose, one of the purposes of the meditation, the prayer and meditation that go together in the study process. Okay? It, it's, a, it's a separate thing, but it, it's combined in the study process. Because as we get into this, and, and practicing some of the strategies and the different styles of study, you're going to stop and do some of that so that you can, what? Listen to God. I mean, God has a lot to say, don't you think? And how does he say it? How does he communicate with us? Through the Bible. Through his spirit, right? And that's one of the things we want to make sure we're activating when we're preparing our mind for action to study is because we're getting in touch with the spirit. The spirit is there with us and we're in relationship and we're honoring the Holy Father and Jesus Christ all three the whole the entire triune God okay Dan I yeah. think when we think about the Holy Spirit and the unholy spirits um, I think about this time of year that we're coming into Halloween yeah. and I don't think people realize what they're messing with Agree. You know, and when we see somebody who's all decorated for, you know, with skeletons and weird things and stuff, we need to really pray because they're messing in things they don't understand. And, um, yeah. you know, we need to pray God's spirit somehow gets a hold of them because... I don't like Halloween. Me either. <laughs> I'm glad when it's over. <laughs> I was at Millersville University and I was starting... One of the professors wanted me to be a family therapist. She, she said, man, you, you would be a good family therapist. She said, rather than do a, a uh, what do you call it, Pat? <laughs> Internship or a thesis? Oh, yeah, thesis. your thesis. Rather than write your thesis, which I had planned to do on, on foster kids and what happens with foster kids. She said, rather than do that, she said, let me design a family therapy class for you. And it'll go all year round. It'll be six credits. And, it'll, and, and I'll, I'll get you a family. And you work with that family for a whole year. And I'll teach you how to do family therapy. I said, that's great, because I'm doing some of that in, at my workplace. With <coughs> so she did. I picked up this family, and guess what? The lady had just gotten back from Colorado where she had spent about six months in a, in a program for people who had multiple personalities. <laughs> it's now called disassociative identity disorder because people disassociate. It can be a good thing because what it is, it's it's a it, it, people do it to protect themselves. This lady had so many different personalities that I'm sitting here talking with her, and I could watch her facial expressions change as she reacted to my tone of voice. I could, I could watch her body language would change, her, her facial expressions would change. As I worked with them, I found out at Halloween, she hid in her closet for three days. She does it every Halloween because she was ritualized by satanic priests mm -hmm. during Halloween. Her father was a satanic Mm -hmm. Okay. I could tell you a lot more about that. Yeah. I worked with this family for a year, and I, I'll tell you, demonology is real. Mm -hmm. It is no joke. Ecclesiastes six is right on. 
I mean, not Ecclesiastes, Ephesians 6. Know it, memorize it, know it, use it. Because it is the principal principalities of darkness that are at work within the unseen realm that surrounds us. Yes, ma'am. Would you also say that communion is worship? Absolutely. When you take in, Absolutely. Uh, this is where this is where I'm going. It's interesting because Paul makes the reference about when you don't understand communion, yeah. you're sick and not well. Yeah. Well, I'll go back to the Old Testament when they decided to throw the ark on a cart. What happened? Yeah. A man died. And it's the same thing. God has a very distaste for people not being sincere when they want to worship him. This reverence thing. And that's what I'm teaching you. That's what I'm trying to promote is the reverence. In other words, exactly. people who don't sincerely worship God, I believe in a lot of ways, are the lukewarm people. You know, you got the cold people who won't even acknowledge God, and then you've got the people that are on fire, and then you have these people who don't really, they're not sincere in their worship. And God hates those people. He despises them. Yeah, I think you're right. Um. I, I, I know a man in my church, and he was living together with a woman, and she was in the process of divorce, but they weren't married. And he had an argument with me over the fact that I said he couldn't serve because of his lifestyle. And that should not have got back to him from board meeting, but it did somehow. Yeah. And so he met with me, and when he left, he said, well, you and I would just have to have a difference of opinion. And I said, no, your difference of opinion is not with me, but it's with God. Well, the next Sunday or two, we did communion, and I don't watch who takes it, who doesn't, but I give the warning that Pastor gives. Mm -hmm. And I watched that particular Sunday, and he took communion. And that same week, I got called to um, Hershey Medical Center. He died. He was only in his 40s. Mm -hmm. And one of the ladies from my church came to me and said, do you think he died because he partook unworthily? And I said... That's up to God about that judgment. But I understood why she asked the question. I mean, I have to admit it entered my mind, but but that's and that's scary. But I think we need to take it seriously. I mean, I would even say that when you go to the Bible and uh, you have the thing about the oh, what was his name and his wife, you know they. They sold the property, mm -hmm. and you know, is is giving an offering or tithe is that a form of worship? And you know, he went and told everybody, "Yep, I gave all the money," and he did. They withheld, and his wife both withheld, and you know, he was carried out of the church, and she was carried out of the church. Somebody made the comment that if. Um God dealt with us the way he did with them. We need a mortuary in the basement of every church. Yeah. I mean, if you lied, you died. Yeah. You know, I felt bad because of Clement's shower. I had never lied to her before, and I lied to her to get her here. You know, and I felt bad about that. And she said, well, it was a nice lie. <laughs> but, but you understand, you know, if, if God did the same thing as he did with them, you know, would you be dead now? <laughs> yeah. I do. We, we, we serve. We serve an awesome God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you, when you really think about what he has done and the creation of the universe speaks it into existence, that's hard to even wrap your head around. Mm -hmm. And... I think it's good sometimes to focus on that, to just realize how it, it's just, we can't understand it all. God says, my ways are not your ways. And, and that's why I'm just putting a 
That's why I sent Jesus Christ to help you understand about me and I want to save you so that we can live eternally because that's why I created you. But that got messed up. But God created mankind to be able to communicate and live with them in the Garden of Eden. And that's what he wants to redo. And he had a plan for how to make that happen so that he could get as many people as he can. He doesn't want these people to, to die. I, you know, uh, I read an article one time about this lady, she's a Quaker in, in Philadelphia. And she wrote devotions back in the 1860s. And it's a devotion book I have. And in that devotion book, she wrote, she's a great writer, oh my goodness. I, I wish I just had an imp of the talent she has. But she writes and she says, her, her desire, her prayer to God is, if you rapture, let me stay so that I can help people come to know who you are. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, come on. <laughs> I, don't wanna, I don't wanna be left behind. <laughs> You know, Paul was that way, though, with yeah. the Jews. Yeah. I'm, I'm willing to give up my salvation that the Jews will come yeah. to Christ. I mean, yeah. when, I don't want to say that, <laughs> that I'll give up my salvation yeah. so somebody else yeah. would come. But, but he, Paul did. He, he had a burden for the Jews, too. Yeah, he did. He did. We just studied his um, Philippians in chapter 1, that's the saying, to die is gain. Yes. But to live is for Christ, Christ, is Christ yeah. you know. Yeah. And so, yeah, he had that dilemma. Like, if he was going to be executed, great, I'm going to heaven, I'll be <laughs> with Christ. But on the other hand, I still have work to do, and God yeah. still wants me to do yeah. work, you know. But, yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's sad because what our government is missing is when it comes to the relationship with Israel, they need to read the book of Romans because <laughs> we are called by God to make the Jews jealous. That's our role <laughs> with the Jewish nation is to be godly with them so that they become jealous of what we have with that, our relationship with, with Jesus Christ. <laughs> But look at the role our government plays with them. It's very different. But anyway, I, I, I need to do... I want, I want you to relax. We're going to do this. I'm going to do one, and then we'll do some more, because I'm going to do different kinds of meditations. But I want to do, do one just to give you a sense so that you can do it before you read these big articles that I've got for you for homework next time, okay? So, I want you to relax, put both feet on the floor and, and, and make yourself comfortable, relax your hands, you can put them in your lap, or, and some people, I, I want you to close your eyes and, and, and just begin to, to breathe through your nose, through your nostrils, as it's mentioned in Genesis chapter 2, and I want you to imagine that breath of God coming through your nostrils and filling your lungs with his divine being and experience this spirit that he has set within you because of what he has done and breathe then out breathe slowly and exhale and when you exhale, exhale all the, 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 the bad stuff out. So breathe in slowly through your nostrils. Hold it for a second. And then exhale. Breathe in slowly. Feel that spirit. Feel your lungs. And when you exhale, it's cleansing you. 
and exhale the bad stuff out. Now I'm going to read a scripture verse, and I want you to, to meditate on that verse and ask God to, 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 to teach you, have him under, help you understand what he would want you to know and how you would need to react to this verse of scripture. And it's Joshua 1.8. And it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. If you have difficulty focusing on that verse of scripture, go back to the breathing. If peripheral thoughts interrupt you, go back to the breathing to calm yourself. And then I want to read it again. This book of the law, the Bible, shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. And listen to the Spirit talk to you and share with you what is meant by this. Why, why was Joshua given that message? And why is Joshua giving that message to us. Is it important? Should we heed it? Should we find out how to do that? This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe do according to all that is written in it. Joshua 1.8 I'm going to count to 10 and when I count to 10 when I finish, you can open your eyes and okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. with a lot of people you're not going to have the same experience that you will have on your own or if it was just one on one okay but in a room like this it's kind of hard but that's kind of how it goes a little bit we were running out of time I could have stretched it out a little bit but I didn't want to do that I don't want to end it in the time but um, Anybody want to share a little bit what their experience was? If they had one? Anybody? Yeah. Uh, in the beginning when you first read the verse, it was just you reading the verse and me trying to remember what you read. Yeah. And then this, when you talked and, then I, and you read it a second time, I had like a uh, light glow or something that I was in there somewhere. Yeah. So it had more meaning for you. Yes, and, yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, it just, like this light and this more knowing, I guess, what the words were saying. So. Yeah. It's all about meditating on, on the Bible. On the Word of God, and then, and then put it into action. 
that's what it's saying to do, is, is, is stay focused on it. And God tells us to, to pray all the time. <laughs> and that, I, don't, I think sometimes we, you know, in our Sunday night prayer service, we talk about prayer and, and a little more. And I think a lot of times we misunderstand prayer. And it, it's good to renew yourself with your understanding about prayer and, and be critical of yourself. Assess yourself, you know. Measure yourself and, and to thine own self be true. Pick out, there, there's parts of you that's good, but there's parts of you that not so good. And so don't be afraid to, to own up to what you don't do right and want to do better because you got to own it before you can change it, okay? If you don't own something, you can't change it. And this is be renewed, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that, that we're called to transform ourselves into the image of Christ, okay? We're work to work to that product. I'm a long way from it. But I know if the rapture happens tomorrow, it will happen for me. Because when I see him, I'll be like him. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that's hope. And that's my hope. I could go on. I, I could talk a bit. Uh, I know we're after 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Any other experiences? Anybody want to say anything? Or? I, mine, as you read it more, words jumped out at me, like meditating on the word. Yeah. And then just the word do, meditate on it, go do it. Yeah. You know, and so certain words jumped out the longer you read the verse. I think that's good because yeah. you go back and read that again in two weeks mm -hmm. and a different word. Mm -hmm. you, you have a different meaning mm -hmm. of it, you know. That's why the word is living and active, mm -hmm. sharper than a two-edged sword. Sure, it, it can split bone and marrow, you know, and, and that's, that's why. Uh, I know I study in something I've read for years, and then now all of a sudden the light bulb goes off. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I get that. You know, I'm sure that's happened to some of you. Mm -hmm. Questions, comments? I, did, did, did anybody, everybody got the roster and the email? Okay. Yeah. I, I, okay. I just got an email from the Munduses. Bro, um, is, they're at the hospital right now. Uh, he has COVID. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Uh, Ralph does. Yeah. So, let's pray. Almighty God, we we humble ourselves before your mighty throne because we love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. And sometimes we just we just don't know how to do things, but we know that, that you are there for us and will help us. I want to take at this moment, I want to lift Ralph before you, Lord, and, and ask for your healing for him and be with Sandy and, and, as they work through this, this virus thing. And, and, and Lord, I just, I just thank you for your answered prayers. I thank you for these, this group and all that, that, that we can accomplish here. I just ask that you help us to be able to, to accomplish our goals. And we thank you for who you are and what you do in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you guys. Don't forget, oh, I got hand.